Hi, so we're going to make a Wimshurst machine, basically out of scrap and our version 2 ink. So that's the plan. Now, um, the first thing you're going to need is a couple of large acrylic discs. Now, I did a separate video on cutting large acrylic discs out, so if you have a look at that video, you can follow that and get yourself a couple of acrylic discs. I got these from an old LCD display, so I pulled out part, two LCD displays, got myself an acrylic, followed that video and cut out two discs. Next thing we're going to need are some bosses to drive those discs. Now I've cut these from an old coffee table, so they're mahogany. So I've used a scrap coffee table and scrap LCDs and I've cut four discs. So we've got two small ones, one large one, one medium one that's been grooved for a pulley. Now I have a lathe, so I put that in the lathe and grooved that out. But you could put it into a drill and if you use a file, turn on the drill and go down that with the file. I did exactly the same thing, only used it in the lathe. Then you stack it large, small, medium, small. Glue and pin it, and that's what you end up with. So that is the actual boss. Now the boss will be fitted to the disc at the centre like that, and that will be the drive boss. What I need to do now, obviously, is put this one together, drill this out, and then give you a close-up of it. So there is a nearly completed boss. It's all been uh, glued and pinned and you can see the six dowels that I've run all the way through. And all I've done then is drill a 22 millimeter hole down there to about 11 millimeters, both sides there and there. And then I've run a 12 millimeter drill bit all the way through so that we don't get any fouling of the axle. And they're there so we can fit our bearings. And we press fit the skater bearings in there swap it over, do the same on the other side, and the axle will then run right the way through the boss on those bearings. Now then, you're going to find it immensely useful if you make something like this up. It's a paper template. All I've done is draw the circle and then mark it up in degrees. What that means is I can take measurements from that, because the disc, what I've done is I've drilled holes through to take screws and then countersunk them on the smooth face, because we attach that to there, like that. Now you put the axle in as a guide to the centre for the disc and then screw the whole disc down, making sure that you've countersunk it so that the heads of the screws are lower than the level of the surface of the disc. Once you've done that, you've finished the boss. So where Wimshurst differs from things like the Bonetti machine is that the Wimshurst is uh, split up into sectors, conductive sectors. Now you don't need to do that, and the Bonetti doesn't, but the Bonetti machine isn't self-starting, whereas the Wimshurst is. Now, in order to do that, this is where this paper template will come in really, really handy. Now normally what you do is cut aluminium sectors out of foil and glue them onto the disc. Obviously what we're going to do is paint it, but we have to pass a brush across those sectors in the neutralising bars. So the sectors are constantly getting brushed. And that kind of worries me that it'll wear the ink out a little bit quickly, as it does wear out the aluminium sectors, and you have to clean the sectors or replace them when they get worn out. Now, that's not really too much of a problem, and Poggendorf did something very similar, is at each point he put a little brass pin. So there'll be 18 sectors around my disc, because I've chosen 18, I like that, 12, 16, 18, 22, doesn't really matter, whatever you want to divide your disc into, I've chosen 18. At each point in the sector, I'm going to put a little brass head, and that's where the brush will rub. So it's free to rub away the brass, but maintain the ink. Now, Poggendorf did this with aluminium as well, and then he put a layer of resin, so it was only the brass tip that actually contacted, and that really isolated and protected the sectors. So we're doing something kind of similar. We could also put a layer of lacquer, obviously, on the paint, and that would do something very similar to what Poggendorf did, and that means that you can get a much higher voltage out of it. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, we're going to put these brass uh, pin heads here at each sector. The, the way to make those pin heads actually is really easy. I've got a steel block, a drawing pin, and if you take a hammer and just tap that drawing pin so it bends over, a pair of pliers and grips, take hold of the pin section, and bend the pin section back out, unless you're lucky, and the pin just drops off like mine did. Now it's kind of soldered on, so it may or may not be level. So when you put it, I got the pin off, put it back on the block, and give it a smart tap, 
and that will make you those little pin caps that we're going to need. So I need 18 of them. Okay, back to my pattern. Now I made this by drawing around the circle, fold it in half, fold it in half, find the centre, use a protractor and mark out the number of lines that you want for the number of sectors and that's what I've done, that's what these straight lines are. Then I've drawn another circle here at a distance from the centre that is slightly greater than my boss. Actually it was all just a guess. So that line is there, a little bit away from the boss. Then I drew another circle here, which is going to be the edge of where my sectors go to. And then I've drawn a circle again here, which is going to be the points at which the brass heads go. So every time a line and this circle intersect, which is here, a brass point will go. Now initially, I just super glue those on. So a spot of super glue at that point. Drop your head on, your brass head on give it a nudge with the pencil and the reason a pencil is the graphite won't stick to the super glue and go around that doing that 18 times. Now equally what I've done is I've drawn an entire sector just one here and I drew that sector just to be something that was to be honest pleasing to me. Actually it's made of two circles from the point where the pin is to the top line that I drew is one full circle and then another circle from the midpoint here to the inner line, another circle, and then I drew those up. And then what I did was put the disc on, go around and draw around them all because that's what we're going to paint in. So I've drawn the lines that we're going to paint, the pin heads have been glued on and we're going to paint over them and that will help secure the pin head even though when the super glue dries uh, it's going to be fine. Anyway. I need to finish that other wheel and then we'll give that a coat of paint. Okay, so that's the discs all finished. And I think they're looking pretty cool, especially if you think they're just made from a broken coffee table and some scrap LCDs. Now, obviously you don't have to paint the ink on. I want to use the ink because I've got it. And if I'm brutally honest, I have no idea if it'll work or not. So I'm hoping it will, but we'll find out. These sectors could equally be made from aluminium. You just cut the aluminium shape out and stick them down according to your template and you can still make the same thing. But that's the heart of the Wimshurst. Now obviously they're set to contra-rotate on the same axle, driven by those bo uh, the pulleys on the bosses. And we'll continue this build in the next uh, videos in this series. So I hope you enjoyed this one and thank you very much for watching.